Headquarters, Marine Corps Base, San Diego, California, 15th of January, 1942. Subject, volunteers for a special battalion. A call has been issued by the commanding general for volunteers for a special battalion to be formed at once. Now this battalion will go into training for a particular combat duty overseas. Those men who can pass the severe requirements of this unit will be assured of immediate active service. The work involves close combat with the enemy. And only those men who are prepared to kill or be killed should apply. Those who are accepted will be highly trained and will have every chance of survival. But it must be understood the work is above and beyond the line of duty. Before you can be selected for this raider battalion, I must ask you a few questions. The final decision, of course, will rest with Colonel Thorwald. Yes, sir. Why do you want to kill Japs? That's what we're here for, I reckon. All right, you are, but you'll get enough of that just being with the Marine Corps. What I want to know is, how would you feel now with a Jap coming at you with a bayonet? There he is. It's about as far away as that window. I'd feel right silly, Lieutenant Browning, sir. Down home in Kentucky, a feller ain't much of a shot less than he can hit a squirrel through the head. I don't see how anything as big as a Jap could get as close as that window. But there'll be times when he can't shoot, when you'll have to sneak up on a man and kill him with a knife. Could you do that? Lieutenant? What a feller tells you here won't be held against him, will it? We'll never go outside that door, Ted Rowe. Lieutenant, I done it. A bunch of them Sheffield boys from Breathitt County found out I was sparking one of their gals. One night when I was visiting her, they snuck up around the cabin. The gal seen them just in time. I snuck out, and in the dark, I... That's, that's all right, Ted Rowe. But I, uh, I still don't know just why you want to get into this. Them Sheffields is in the war. Why, if one of them was to kill more Japs than I did, or get decorated, or the like of that, I'd never go home. My pappy'd wallop the daylights out of me, big as I am. What's your reason for joining up with the Raiders? Reason? Yeah, for wanting to join a breakneck gang like this. Why, with your schooling and background, you could make officers training. In no time at all, you'd be past where it's taken me years to get. Now, what's the reason? I'd rather not say, sir. Doesn't my being here speak for itself? It does not. You'll give me a reason and a good one or stop wasting my time. It's nothing I'm ashamed of. Speaking of it may just defeat my purpose, that's all. Out with it. All right. I'm an ordained minister of the gospel. When I left theological college, I entered the Marines instead of seeking a church because I felt that in times like these, so many men in the service, I could do more good here. Now I want the most dangerous post I can find. For there beside me will be the men who will need me most. I'm sorry, Mac. We got our chaplains. What we want now is killers. I'll do my duty, sir. I believe you will, Harbison. This Raider Battalion is a tough outfit, Mac. You don't look salty enough. Yeah, yeah, that's what they all say. Nobody gives me a break. Who? Who are you talking about? Who doesn't give you a break? Nobody gives me a break. At home, it was the same way. To them, I was just... just a no-good kid. No-good kid, huh? Where are you from? Montana? No, no. Montana's my name. Frankie Montana. I'm from Brooklyn. I wish I was there right now. Oh, this Marine Corps is a bunk. Hello, right here. Sit down. Cut out the rough stuff. I'll tell you when to go. Don't you ever again make a crack like that about the Marine Corps. Now, what's your belly ache about? Uh, Spit it out! I got no squawk! What'd you do, get pinched or something? Lie about it to get in the Marines? You tell me! You're a real toughie, aren't you? Okay, Frankie. But what I want to know is, why did you volunteer for this job? You didn't have to. Well, I told you. Everybody's always called me a no-good kid. I got sick of it. Oh, I never did anything much. My old man, he, he wasn't my real father, started shoving me around when I was little. I got sore, it wouldn't work. He threw me out in my... My mother died and I, I trained with a tough crowd. Oh, let it pass, let it pass. Can I go now, sir? Oh, take it easy, son. You know something? They called me a no-good kid once, too. Only they called it to me in Greek. 
It was a little seaport town, Piraeus. You probably never heard of it. What do you mean? Oh, I ain't so dumb. Well, I've been there. Washing dishes in a Black Star liner out of Bush Terminal. Well, what do you know about that? Well, that's how I came to America, washing dishes on a boat. Yeah, I took the bumps, kid. I came up the hard way. I've never been to Annapolis. But then you can get these without going there, too. Frankie, just because we're a couple of no good kids, I'm going to take a chance. Huh? Sergeant Major, is the old man busy? Never too busy to see you. Go on in, transport. Thanks. Transport. Colonel. Well, well, well. I had an idea you'd show up. Well, when I heard you was back, I just busted right in. I'd have been so if you hadn't. Come on, sit down. Where was it last time, Manila? Oh, Colonel, you forgot. China, the Yancey Patrol? Right, right. Well, you know, Transport, I wasn't on the river long. Yeah, I know. And me and the rest of the old gang could hardly believe it when we heard you quit the Marines. Well, I felt bad about that, but I had to do it that way. I can talk about it now. You know where I went? We heard you were sick and went back to the States, but that didn't seem like you. Must have been a couple of Army guys. <laughs> <laughs> where did you go, Colonel? I joined the Chinese Army. Are you kidding, sir? And not even the Chinese Marines. What for? Well, I can see this war with Japan coming. You didn't have to look far for that. I realized that our first line of defense would be China. So I decided to find out just what her war potential was, just how long she could hold out. I joined the Chinese 8th Route Army. Remember that march they made during the Civil War, 6,000 miles clear across the country? Was they Chinese in the Civil War? I thought there was General Sherman marching along to... Oh, forgive me, sir. I wasn't trying to make no crack, honest. It's just that I don't read the papers past the funny page. Will you excuse me, sir? Never mind, Transport. Anyway, that's all over. All the Chinese are united now against the Japs. I've been hearing marvelous things about the... the guerrilla tactics of the 8th Army. This is right after Shanghai. I made up my mind to find out about them. I couldn't go in uniform, so I went without. Plenty of fighting, huh, sir? Transport, you never saw anything like it. Just look at those half-armed, ill-fed peasants. They outmarched, outfought, outmaneuvered the Japs at every turn because they believed in what they were fighting for. Because every man had only one desire, to do his duty. Well, I learned a lot of things that are not in textbooks, and I came back to the States to tell about them. Then, Pearl Harbor, and here we go again. I don't ask for nothing better, sir. Transport, we're going to try out something new. Headquarters giving me a free hand. You'll see some fun before we're through. I hope them Japs have got a sense of humor. They're going to need it. I want you for my personal runner again. So just wait for orders. Yes, sir. As far as I'm concerned, you're okay. The rest is up to the Colonel. And good luck. Thank you, sir. Hey, there. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Oh, Turn the stand stand there again, eh? One you side. Look. No, for two what seconds. is this? What is this? Who's next here? I am, sir. I was here first. I was next in line. I went down the scuttlebutt to get a drink of water, and he aced himself. Oh, what are you talking about? Give me them papers. Hey, there's the same name on both of these. I'm Larry O'Ryan. My name's Kurt Richter. No, no, where it says next of kin, it's the same. It says next of kin, Mrs. Molly Richter, mother. Mrs. Molly Richter, mother. How come? What is this? That's right, Gunner. We both have the same mother. Mom threw my father out when I was a baby and married his old man, a Dutchman. Can you imagine that? Why, his old man hadn't drawn a sober breath in 10 years. Could you blame her? Kind of, kind of. Now, you stand over there. And you stand over there. Now, tell me, you, uh... Richter, why are you so bent on getting in ahead of him, and vice versa? You first. I enlisted to fight Japs. The sooner I get at it, the better. Wouldn't be just a grandstand play, would it? What do you mean? There's a girl. Who is she? Her name's Kathleen. You keep her out of this. Kathleen who? Kathleen Corrigan. It's a girl back in Boston. Her father's in the Marine barracks of the Navy Yard there. Quartermaster Sergeant Corrigan. What? Jim Corrigan's daughter? Why, she's a little baby. I bounced her on my knee. She's in her second year at City College. No. Well, get on with it. Get on. Well, that's all. 
Except this dope joined the Marines to make a hit with her. Well, that's a lie. Why, hey, no, pipe no. down the both of you. It can't be going on all day like this. We'll toss for it. The loser goes to the end of the line. Why, here's a coin, sir. Thanks. Heads. Heads it is. You wait, and at the end of the line. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Let me see that coin. Oh, no. Oh, All right, this one's down. Hey, quiet. Be quiet. I see you've been in the brig four times, and always for the same thing, fighting. Well, you've got to be tough to be a Marine, sir. Them monkeys will run all over you if you ain't. You've also been in the ring. What name did you fight under? Pig Iron, sir. I was middleweight champion of East New Jersey once. Why'd they call you Pig Iron? Well, my old man had a little farm just outside of town. I used to go around collecting garbage, and the kids started calling me Piggy. Well, I got pretty strong, even those cans around, so after a while, I started to beat the town kids up. Finally, they stopped calling it. Then when I started fighting, they called me Pig Iron, which I didn't mind. I'm beginning to understand your record, Matthews. You felt that people looked down on you, on account of your job. When you found you could make them look up to you with your fists, you kept on using them. Now it's got to be second nature with you. You hit first and think afterward. Well, it's kind of hard to think of it that way when the kids hold their noses when you walk by. <laughs> I see that's a lot in that, Matthews. But in the outfit that I'm forming, that's the first lesson to learn. That every man's job is important. Whether he carries a rifle, cooks in the galley, drives a truck, or works as a messman, it's the service that counts. Yes, sir. You'll do, Matthews. Just why did you volunteer for this raider battalion? My brother died at Pearl Harbor. They didn't find enough of them to bury. What caused you to volunteer for this raider battalion? I fought in Spain. I fought in Greece. This fight is all the same. Fascism. Why do you want to join this outfit? My sister was caught by the Japanese in Manila. We never heard a word from her. But we read in the newspapers what they did. Now, what about you? Three years I've been a Marine. I haven't been in a fight yet. This is my chance. Why do you want to sign up? I just don't like Japs. Attention! Sir, the battalion is formed. Take your post. At ease. Sit down, boys, and make yourselves comfortable. The smoking lamp is lit. Boys, this is our first get-together, but it won't be our last. You probably wonder what this is all about. Well. I can't tell you now. You'll learn as you go along. But I can say this. You are to receive a course of training unique in the history of the Marine Corps. <coughs> if you justify the effort to be spent on you, you may be able to point the way in which this, this tremendously difficult war in the Pacific can be won. Briefly, it can be won by teamwork, by trained men fighting together with the precision of a machine. But it's more than that. <coughs> it must be a harmonious machine. Now you start with the fundamentals. And at the bottom of everything is self-discipline. You must start by casting out all prejudices, racial, religious, every other kind. I want you to feel free to ask questions, even embarrassing ones. Come to me with suggestions. We're going to be more than officers and men in this. We're going to be comrades. What I eat, you will eat. Where I sleep, you will sleep. I will take you into my confidence whenever it's possible before going into battle. We'll have a meeting in which I'll explain our plans and objectives so that each of you can make a more intelligent contribution to the result. Afterward, we'll have another meeting to criticize the way in, in which the operation was conducted. We'll fight and endure and win together. Ahead of you lies a hard road. You'll often have bad food and very little of that. Many times your bed will be a muddy ditch. You'll march until you think you're exhausted and then be called on to start out again. To carry you through the rough spots before you, teamwork is needed. You'll have to help each other. The Chinese have a word for it. It is gung ho. Gung to work, ho harmony. I propose it as our motto. Gung ho. Come on now, give it to me. <laughs>
Pearl Harbor is history now by two months. From 15,000 volunteers, the Colonel has accepted about 900 of us, and our training begins. Calisthenics, the development of a vigorous body to better house a healthy mind and spirit. The Colonel has warned us it isn't going to be easy, and that's the prize understatement of 1942. Our objective is already selected, and we'll attack when our preparation in the tradition of gung-ho is complete. Realizing that we'll shove off the minute we're in shape, we settle down to the sizable job of becoming the second Raider Battalion. And we know the reason for this sweat and bodily pain. The old man explains over and over that these exercises and all the others to follow will pay off on some enemy-held beach or in some Jap-infested jungle. We learn to defend and attack without the aid of weapons. You can do a lot with a strong pair of hands, a healthy body, and a quick mind. This is the science of judo. We learn to swim through fire, how to jump from ships. There's the science of scaling walls and barriers, anything the enemy may place in our way or hide behind. This is our security weapon, without which a raider loses his whole identity. One of our boys is a Filipino and an expert with the knife. He teaches us the hundred uses of it, a handy, harmless tool or a deadly, convincing weapon. Now the training becomes more intensive. The officers are right along with us, every ache, every bruise, every step of the way. Their bars and insignia are left in the barracks. We know their rank because we eat, sleep, work, and play together. But they have our respect, for an officer in this outfit has to have what it takes. Some of us are going to die for democracy and freedom and equality. But right here in the 2nd Raider Battalion, we're going to live it while we can. And no matter how tough the going gets, we know the old man is always watching out for us. We bridge barbed wire entanglements with our own bodies and learn not to let this happen. We discover that the bayonet is no ornament on the end of a rifle, and bayonet drill is rough. When we reach a canyon or a gorge or declivity, perhaps we can cross it this way. Always do the unexpected. If we trip or fall, our bodies are trained to respond instantly. A raider is never out of firing position, nor is he ever relaxed. He's always on the alert for sudden attack from any quarter, and his body is taught to respond automatically. There are few rules to this fight we're in, and so we take on a few tricks. Unpleasant, yes, but sometimes highly effective. In some of the final cross-country hikes, we're traveling 45 miles in eight hours with full pack and short rations. You have to run just about every step of the way. They're designed to further reduce our number. They do. Take it, folks. That is. Now, man, I want no falling out. And if you do fall out, you fall right out of this battalion. We're all starting, and we're all finishing. Now get your gear set. Ooh! Oh! Oh! oh. Larry, what's the matter? Oh, sudden pain, like a like a knife. Oh. Lieutenant! Oh, Lieutenant! Oh! oh. What's the matter? Sudden pain. I guess I'll be all right. Report to sick bay. Yes, sir. Sergeant Pet John. Come on. I answer. Hey! Head! Hey! Hey! Thanks, Hey! 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 I guess this is as close to heaven as I'll ever get. A swell meal, a beautiful girl, and sad to say, Papa Corrigan gone for the evening. My, oh my, the barracks were never like this. <laughs> is this the new judo grip? Oh, excuse me, I didn't realize I was holding you so tight. <laughs> yes, you didn't. I wonder what happened to Kurt. Are you certain you left word we'd be here? Well, sure I did, but he's probably so exhausted that he's doing bunk fatigue right now. Don't answer it. 
probably some poor Marine trying to work his way through Officer's Candidate School by selling magazine subscriptions. <laughs> Marines don't sell magazines, my friend. Oh, it's good to see you. Come on in. You're looking prettier than ever. Oh, thank you. You're looking pretty good yourself. Hey, why don't you write a fellow? Let him know you're coming. Well, I wanted to surprise you. Boy, you sure did. <laughs> Gosh, it's good to have you with us again. Oh, it's good to be here, Kurt. Hey, remember me? I'm still here. Now, don't remind us. We're trying to forget it. How's my mother? Grand. Oh, she told me to give you something. She did? What? Mm -hmm. This. Hey, what about me? Did she send me one, too? She did. Good. Not until you do the dishes, as you promised. Get going with your mess duty. It's gonna be the fastest job of dishwashing you ever saw. Gather in closer. Sit down. The smoking lamp is lit. I want to give you some good news. Your period of training in this area is over. We are now headed for the real thing. <laughs> this is not an orthodox war in the Pacific. The Japanese are crafty, tenacious, tough, but they have a weakness. It lies in their inability to adapt themselves to unusual situations. You probably have wondered why I place such emphasis on uh, physical conditioning, control, cooperation. It was to enable us to exploit to the utmost the element of surprise and thus capitalize on the enemy's weakness. We must be able to land where they think we cannot, to cross terrain which they think impassable. This means hard work, but by subjecting ourselves to unusual hardships, we'll gain our objectives more effectively and at a minimum cost of human lives. If you can accomplish your initial task, others can be set up. There's no limit to what can be done. Can you do it? No! Now, what about some chow? Kathleen, I haven't much time. Is there some place we could go sit down and be alone? <laughs> alone in San Diego? Impossible. But I know a place where we can sit down. Oh, swell. And come on. Apple pie, custard yeah. pie, blueberry pie, blackberry pie, lemon pie, peach pie, jello, brown betty pudding, and a pineapple upside down cake. What do you have? Will you repeat that, please? Apple pie, custard pie, blueberry pie, blackberry pie, lemon pie, peach pie, jello, brown betty pudding, and pineapple upside down cake. What look these, sailors? Yeah, our folks are ready for you. What do you have? We'd like a couple of hamburgers, please. So would I. Don't you know this is Meatless Tuesday? Just when I felt like having a hamburger. I can't understand it. We got Meatless Tuesday just so the guys in the Army and Navy can have all the meat they want. So what happens? On Meatless Tuesday, the Army and Navy come in here and ask for hamburgers. I don't get it. Okay, okay, you win. We'll settle for two coffees. That suits me. Oh, I ought to have been a bookkeeper. Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. Well, this isn't exactly the sort of place I had in mind. I planned a more romantic kind of spot. You know, like you see in the movies. One with the moon and trees and stars. Maybe even a little soft music. Well, at least we have the music. Hey, that's something anyway. <laughs> Good to have you alone for a change. You know that wolf in uniform won't come barging in on us. You know, ever since I can remember it, you and Larry have been scrapping about something or other. Yeah, that was kid stuff. It isn't anymore. Kathy, I think we're shipping out soon. Gosh, I hate to see you go. Yeah, I guess you wouldn't be happy otherwise. No, I wouldn't. It's what I've been waiting for. What I've been trained for. I'm gonna miss you terribly. Will you, really? Of course I will. Oh, that makes it a lot easier for me then. You see, I I just couldn't leave without telling you that... Yes, Gary. Well, I'm not very good with words. I'm not a smooth talker like Larry. But I want you to know how I feel about you. Oh, oh don't stop me now or I'll never get the nerve to finish. You see, Kathy, some guys need pictures of their girls to remind them of what they look like. 
but not me. I keep seeing you all the time, no matter where I am or what I'm doing. I keep hearing your name as if someone was whispering it to me. I got it so bad I can't think straight. Kathy, am I making a sucker out of myself? I mean, have I got the right to think of you as my girl? To count on you to be waiting here for me when I come back? I'd like to know the answer to that, too. How'd you find us? Sergeant Corrigan told me that Kathleen usually stops here after work. I wanted to see her. All right, you've seen her, now blow. Oh, but I want a good look. Listen, Larry, if you don't get out of here, you won't look at any... Oh, now, look, break it up, are, folks. Nice hot coffee. <laughs> what are you gonna have? A hamburger. Hamburger. See what I mean? This is Meatless Tuesday. I can't understand it. We oh, got... Forget these. it. I'm still gonna be a bookkeeper. Monday this, Tuesday that, Thursday something else. Kathy, this is goodbye. Goodbye, Kurt. Take care of yourself. Goodbye, Larry. Goodbye, and come back. So long. Bye, Kathy. We'll be seeing you. now. Our gear is packed and about 600 of us file aboard awaiting transport. Our destination? Unannounced. We're shoving off into the unknown. The big ship heads out to the open sea and her boiling wake testifies to the urgency of our mission. The friendly shores of home fade into the mist. Pearl Harbor, five months following the day of infamy. Silence settles over the ship as we ease past the wreckage. There they are, the Arizona with her masts and torn bridge thrusting out of the water, the rusty hull of the capsized Oklahoma. Their guns are cold and unmanned, mute testimony to the power of Japan. There are men in the second rate of battalion who lost brothers on those ships. Can we help even the score? We dare not fail. Take a good look, Raiders. That's what the Colonel meant when he told us about them Japs. After three more months of intensive training, we're ready. We know it. We're confident and sure of ourselves, but not reckless. The Navy has won the battles of the Coral Sea and Midway. But the Japs have taken Singapore, Burma, the East Indies, and are threatening both Australia and Alaska. No, there's little to make us overconfident. Oh, baby. <clears throat> you know, I, I always did like a nice hot bath before dinner. What makes you think you're going to get any dinner? There, that should hold you for a while, Mac. Thanks. All I want to know is, when does the war start? I'll need it to take a rest. I've been climbing so many hills, I'm beginning to feel like a goat. I look like a goat, I act like a goat. I'm even starting to think like a goat. Did you say think? Yeah, why? Oh, nothing, I just wondered. Hey, what did he mean by that? Hey! <laughs> A Navy spokesman has indicated there are about 10,000 Japanese troops on Kiska and Optu. And here is a Navy bulletin just handed me. U.S. Marines have landed in the Solomon Islands on Guadalcanal and Tulagi. The enemy is counterattacking with rapidity and vigor. The fighting is savage and losses on both sides are heavy. In the first hours, we have lost one cruiser sunk, two cruisers, two destroyers, and one transport damaged. The Navy Department cautions that considerable losses must be expected. <laughs> Now, you men, listen to me. This is it. We move out of here before morning, so get all your gear together. Where do we go, Gunner? Come on, shake a little. And yeah, when do we eat? Hey, don't we get any sleep? Ah, you've been asleep since you were born. You'll get plenty of sleep in the next eight days, and I'll promise you that. Now, move out of here as fast as you get your gear together. Line up outside by platoons, and let's go! Two hundred canvas. 
from the 15,000 who started and were shoving off without convoy, without escort, alone. Not on a transport, a cruiser, or destroyer. We pack ourselves into two submarines. This is a new one in the history of American warfare. But we're the Raiders, organized and trained to do the unexpected. All right, men, just follow transport. He'll show you the bunks assigned to you. Come on, snap it up. Hurry up. Move along. Move along. Come on, move along. There's more guys in back here. That's it. Move along. Snap it up. Pull in your neck. Knucklehead. That's it. Come on, move along. Move along, boys. Move along. Okay, that's it. I used to think the subway was crowded. Man, there's more people in here than the whole town where I come from. I haven't been pushed around so much since my horse fell with being a cattle stampede. Me, I don't mind this at all. When I was a kid, my whole family used to sleep in one room. How many in your family? Twelve. That's when I joined up. But it's been quite some time since I heard from my folks. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, guys. Pipe down. The colonel wants to say a few words to you. Well, boys, now you know how a sardine feels. <laughs> I, uh, I want you to stay in your bunks as much as possible, as it'll be better for everyone. I'm going to show you all that no matter how you feel, no matter what tricks your imagination may play on you, even though we stay submerged for many hours together, there'll always be air enough for all of us to breathe. The reconditioning system has a margin of safety, Far beyond that required by the greatest number of men that could be packed inside the hull. For the present, we're running on the surface, but we'll submerge as soon as possible. However, you'll have ample warning before we do. What about it, gang? Can we take it? Go! 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 We'll start serving chow in an hour. You'll make your way to the mess in relays according to the schedules given to the squad leaders. This. What is it, Rube? Everything's going to be all right. It feels like everything's pressing in on me. Don't think about it. Close your eyes. You can still see it. You never could stand being crowded in. I can feel it. Think of something else, Rube. Think of your home. Think of the sheep coming down to the brook to drink. Didn't have no sheep. We all kept hogs. Think of the hogs. Count them, Rube. Count them. One, two, three, four. Keep counting, Rube. Keep counting. Can't. Four is all I had. <laughs> You'll be all right, Rube. Just keep counting those four over and over again. Frankie, I just remembered something. You know, I never did tell you that I'd been to Brooklyn, did I? Yeah, I used to go there to Ebbets Field to see the Dodgers play. No kidding. Sure. Oh, boy, the Dodgers. You know, that's where I learned my marksmanship. How do you mean? <laughs> Tossing pop bottles at the umpire. <laughs> It's 
stick that in his sentries back, you'd make him say, Uncle. Hey, Parson? You'd make him call for the whole congregation. Let's see. I like a little more weight on the end. Oh, Doc. Yes, Kazarowski? What do you think of the weight of this knife? Not bad. By the way, is there any place where you can stab a man so he won't make any sound at all? Well, the heart's the best chance, but wherever you stick a man, he's liable to cry out instinctively. See? That's one way to keep him from letting out a peep. Then? That's right, Lieutenant. The main thing is force. Plenty of force. You know, it takes a surgeon to realize how tough the human body is, so when you hit a man, give it all you've got. You can tell. You can tell by the feel if the blade is penetrated, and if it hasn't, hit him again. Well, good hunting. You know, there's still a much more effective way of doing that. Let me show you. Oh, no, you don't. <laughs> Boys, quite. All right, men, now. Shouldn't have done it. 13, 14, 15. Are you kidding? Is she only 16? <laughs> Sweet 16. Sweet 16 and never been kissed. Uh, Both never been kissed. Why, if I had a cent for every time I've been kissed, I'd be kissed. Oh, 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 hold it, hold it, guys. Hold it. How old do you really think he is? 12. 60. The only reason he looks older is because he worries so much. <laughs> All right, have your little laugh, but give me a Happy knife. birthday to Gunner. Happy birthday to Gunner. Happy birthday, dear Gunner. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> wait a minute, wait a minute, make a wish. Got it, go. <laughs> All right, blow out my candles on my cake. It's a fine cake. Oh, oh. You guys, the colonel wants all hands to have one of these. Hey, transport, what do you got? The evening papers? What the doctors do at Philly? These are maps. Tells us where we're going. Got any pinup girl, transport? No, but I got a nice picture of myself in a bathing suit. Want me to autograph it for you? Where is it? Huh? Hey, transport, I don't understand this. What do you expect him to do? Talk to you? Study him, knucklehead. Study him. Get to know him better than your own wife, if you had a wife. The colonel is going to ask you all questions about him later on. Well, I can see there's a couple of islands drawn here. What do you expect? Moving pictures of Dorothy Lamour on them islands? Oh, is that bad? There they are, South Sea Islands. Gee, I can remember when I used to be out harvesting in the North 80 and a waving wheat would look like the sea. I'd wonder if I'd ever see places like Tahiti and Gilbert and Marshalls. Do you ever want to go there, Frankie? Nope. Any place that ain't got a pool room don't interest me. Ah. Uh -huh. We should arrive in Area 7 at approximately 20 hundred. Very good. How'd it go, Gunner? Ahoy, Raiders! Boys, by now you've all had a chance to study your maps. I know you've been wondering why we're bound for. Well, now I can let you in on the secret. Our objective is make an island. We should arrive about next Wednesday. Make an island has been particularly troublesome because it threatens our line of communication with Australia. It's constantly being strengthened, and if the Japs should attempt to seize some more in the Fijis, Macon undoubtedly would be one of the takeoff points. We'll go ashore at dawn, seize it, kill every Jap, and destroy the installations. Now as to the odds. There are about two Japs for every one of you. As they are the defending force, you can multiply that by three. Six to one. How can we overcome that advantage? Platoon leaders, take over. Well, men, you've heard the colonel. And the odds are six to one. How are we going to overcome that? 
Harbison. By the element of surprise, sir. Good. What else? Young oh, oh, sir. Sir. I'm working together. I have a plan so well laid out that every man knows what to do and does it. And that's the most important thing. If you haven't got that, you have nothing. Now, you're all part of a team. Team for killing. After studying your maps, you probably notice a lot of things that are very familiar to you. Now, what do you recognize? I recognize the beach we land on every night at Honolulu. Same shape. There's the building we blew up every night and built again the next day. It's Mark Government House here. And there's a radio station just where we had it. That's good map reading. Now, we laid out Macon Island exactly as it is. And you've been rehearsing for the things you have to do. Although you don't know it, from the very beginning, you men have been training for this raid. When you get there, I want to know the things you've been trained to do. There should be nothing to it. Any questions? All right. I want you to look over your maps again and again. If you're in doubt about anything, just tell me. I'll try to straighten you out. Ahoy, Raiders! Ahoy, Raiders! Colonel, there's Macon Island. We arrive there tomorrow. We contacted the other submarine and arranged the rendezvous. Good. Our information is that Lucknow on the north and Meraki on the south are possibly fortified. But Macon is the Jap strong point east of Jaluit. I suppose the Japs patrol these waters, from the air at least. We're in Jap waters now. I doubled all watches at sunrise. Sir, we've just picked up some radio telephone messages. Japanese. They're too strong to come from a land station. Sounds like a carrier talking to planes. Gunner! Yes, sir. Get the men down and keep them below until further orders. Hey, aye, aye, sir. All right, men, knock it off. Clear the deck. All right, boys. Let it snappy. Missing. Where's Tedro? Well, he was topside with us, sir, when we first went up. He hasn't slept very well since he's been aboard. He just lays awake nights counting those four hogs of him. Deck, Tedro. Is there anything we can do, Captain? Battle stations, surface. <laughs>
water in forward torpedo room, sir. It's all right. Take it easy, guys. Nothing serious. Look! Look, we're breaking up! Water's coming in! Max, don't try to fool me! We're gonna drown! I tell you, we're gonna drown! What are you trying to do? Start a panic? I, I'm sorry, sir. Okay, son. Back in your bunk. No, none of you think he's yellow, either. That can happen to all of us. You know, a guy could get killed in here. Standard. Aye, aye, sir. Periscope depth. Bring her up. Aye, aye, sir. Sorry about this, Captain. You might have had a shot at the flat top those planes came from. Waters, Colonel. This isn't a hunting trip. We've only got two torpedoes with instructions not to use them except for defense. My orders are to get you there. And to me, that means all of you. so that we can get you a landing party away before it gets too late. Aye, aye. All ahead, two-thirds. All ahead, two-thirds. Take it easy. Pipe oh, down, will you? Hey, Larry, why don't you try having one of those stomach aches of yours now, huh? I would, but my girl's 4,000 miles away. Whose girl? My girl, Kathy. Oh, what are you hey, talking about Break here? it up! Break it up! The Colonel has some final instructions. Well, boys, this is what we've been waiting for. Main Island has been sighted, and our rendezvous with the other submarine has been accomplished. We'll have to be ashore before sunrise. By sunset, all our missions must be carried out, not a Jap left alive on the island. Both our submarines will lie submerged during the day. After dark, they'll come to the surface to take us off. We must get aboard or be left behind. We're going in under the most favorable conditions possible. When you get in the fight, it's up to you. Use your heads, and God bless you. This is it. This is the objective of six months training and eight days of traveling out of Pearl Harbor. In an hour or two from now, we'll know if the Jap can be beaten. We'll know if these past six months have been worthwhile or have been in vain. swells toss the rubber boats about and we have trouble jumping into them. And the water breaking over and running off the sub pours into the open boats. But one by one they're loaded and we shove off to the job ahead, to the unknown. There's admiration in the eyes of the submarine crew as we start for the shore. In the half light of dawn, the island is clearly visible. What about the enemy? Has he seen us? He has artillery on the island. Why hasn't he opened up? How many machine guns will we meet on the beach? The colonel and transport and gunner and the captain have told us this is the moment when your nerves sometimes break up. Our enemies, Japs, are watching us right now. They must be. Why don't they start shooting? Kill or be killed. A few more yards now. Man, it's quiet. 
We're there, out of the boats. Our feet are on land. Now, Raiders, let's go. Pedro, send out the scouts. All right, sir. A and B company runners, tell your commanding officers to report to me. All right, sir. This is where we are. Chris, you move south against the village as advance guard. Aye, aye, sir. Browning, you move in reserve and send a group to cover Chris's left flank. Aye, aye, sir. From this point on, everyone travels as light as possible. Fire. Yeah, that was a Jap machine gun, an Ambo. Maybe we have to change our plans and work fast. Montana, Pig Iron, Tedro, Richter, Orion. Advance from this point, wipe out that machine gun nest. Marks and the rest of you follow me, we'll outflank them from the left. Now use your heads, all of you. Pig Iron, you're in charge of this group. Aye, sir. Good luck, kid. You guys know what we have to do. I'll make the assault and you cover me. If my luck is bad, Kurt, you're next. Then Larry, Frankie, and Tedro. So long, fellas. There goes nothing.
Looks like Piggy stopped one. Yeah. Maybe I'll have better luck. Kurt. Hmm? I... I just wanted to say that was all malarkey about Kathleen and me. I always tried to make you think she cared for me. Well, she didn't. And I'm not in love with her. Guess I got in the habit of scrapping with you about everything. Then she came along. You're such a serious guy. You never were a good liar, Larry. So, uh, Larry! What you doing? The Colonel always said if we got stuck, to use our heads and do the unexpected. I used to run the 100-yard dash in 10 seconds flat for the tallest AC at Greenpoint, but not dressed like this. Start shooting now, Rube. Give him something to worry about. What you did, kid, it was great. I'm proud of you, Frankie. Thanks, Lieutenant. All right, you can take it from here. You'll be all right, Mac. Put him down right here. Well, pig iron, old boy. Say, what did they try to do to you? Oh, can't talk, huh? A Marine that can't squawk. Well, that's not a bad idea. You know something? They almost got you, boy. Looks like you're due for a transfusion. Oh, Doc! Come here, will you please? Sit tight, Biggie. I'll be right back. You better take a look at this. Pablo, 
Take a fire group across, scout the hospital area. We'll cover you from here with machine gun fire. Aye, aye, sir. Harbison, take the left flank. Tetro, the right. All right. Let's go. Calling CP. Chris calling CP. Hold it, Chris. Colonel, Chris wants to talk to you, sir. Command post speaking. Come in, Chris. Three enemy planes approaching from the east. I see them, Chris. Halt advance. Maintain your positions. Do not fire on planes. Do not fire on planes. Got it, Chris? Roger. All companies. All companies, come in, please. Company commanders report to rendezvous B. Report to rendezvous B. Boys, those planes changed the situation. Now, as you know, our position is here. The radio station there. And it's directing those planes. We've got to knock it out before they return with reinforcements. <laughs> for Lieutenant Browning to appear on left flank. We're under heavy fire and the station seems to be held in force. McBride, calling McBride. Come in, McBride. Where's transport? He's back checking on the hospital marking job, sir. Mm -hmm. Listen in on this. Yes, sir. Saturday afternoon, isn't it? If we were back home, we'd be getting time and a half for this. At a buck sixty. How much does that make? Uh, I haven't seen figures like that since I got my serial number. Well, what do we spend it on if we had it? I know what I'd spend it on if I was home. First, I'd call Bubbles. Oh, what up, Dave? Oh, well, forget it. I wonder what we're going to have for chow tonight. It's a century fried chicken. Hey, Joe, what do you say we go on a strike? Do that, you knuckleheads! Meanwhile, get this job done before them little sons of the rising sun catch you with your tails in the breeze. Okay, you big bureaucrat, you. You know, transport, I think the colonel's a bit touched with the heat, sticking this flag up here. We know we're Americans. Listen, Rembrandt, the colonel knows what he's doing all the time. Now get to work before I hit you with a bucket of paint. Transport? Yes, sir. Coming, sir. McBride stopped. Radio out. He's just off the road. 50 yards aside the station. Hustle on down as close as you can and get a report. Aye, aye, sir. Transport. Yes, sir? Mind, I want you back. Make it snappy. I'll be back, sir.
Guards, that support. Better come up quick before the Japs spread out on our flank. So what? So good old Dubuque here is carrying us over for a touchdown. I got you, Kazarowski. Here's my rifle. Hold on to your hat. on the side of the right. I hope so, Harbison. Yes, RDF. Go ahead. Yes? How many? Compass reading 280? Okay. Four wall, sir. Yes? Enemy planes approaching, sir. RDF reports a large force coming in at 280. How far away? Close, sir. They didn't know exactly there. 
Calling all companies. All companies retire in order to line X. Draw enemy with you. Command post moving. Rendezvous A. Repeat. Rendezvous A. Commanders retire in order. Aye, aye, sir. Tell the boys to withdraw. Here's where we spring the trap. Mind you now, we got to hold them close around the hospital. Joe. What's that, Hank? The Colonel had us paint that flag up there knowing the Japs had blasted. Now we're just drawing those monkeys in, see? I think we ought to riddle them anyway. No, don't kill them when they're willing to surrender. They know when they've been licked. Maybe. Did you get
get him, Rube? I got him. Thy will be done. On earth, as it is in... Sir, ship calling. Paul was speaking. Colonel, radio intelligence indicates Jap task force 165 magnetic, speed 16 knots. Answer. I understand very well. We'll step up operations. Roger. Chris, intelligence reports a strong Japanese task force headed this way. Oh, how long before they get here? Sometime tonight. We must complete all operations and be back on the subs before they arrive. I want you to take the demolition squad and destroy any installations left on the island, leaving nothing which would be of use to the enemy. Aye, sir. Double Tolan. Yes, sir. Browning, I want you to take your men around to the lagoon and get ready for us to embark as soon as possible. Aye, aye, sir. All right, boys. All those who are able to travel will shut off. Take your men, put enough under those oil tanks to blow up the whole field. Good on. Yes, sir? Have you seen transport? Yes, sir. You won't be going back with us, sir. Colonel Thorwald, sir. Colonel Thorwald. Captain Dunphy's calling. Yes, Captain Dunphy. Where are your men, Colonel? Have they left the beach? Latest intelligence reveals enemy destroyers approaching full speed. Will arrive sooner than anticipated. Can you hurry it up, Colonel? We are proceeding as rapidly as possible, Captain. Most of the force is on the way. The rest of us are preparing to leave now. Attention, all NCOs! Boys decided that we evacuate the wounded at once. Let's go! The tender care given our wounded by the natives is born of sympathy and kindness and a share in a common cause. But behind us, 30 of the 2nd Raider Battalion have died for an ideal. We must live it. All right, Kurt, let's go. Everything taken care of, sir. Demolition men have placed all charges. Corporal Tolan's squad will set them off as soon as we leave the island. Good. All right, boys, you got to shove off at once. Move out. Oh, Frankie. How you coming? Okay, sir. Had me worried for a while. Anything I can do for you? Yeah. Tell me. When do we go to Tokyo? <laughs> That's a military secret. Come on, let's get him aboard. Take it easy, man. <laughs>
assist landing party with stretcher cases. too soon to talk of the Macon Island Raid is finished when we're seven days from home and Jap warships are closing in on us, but I'll take that chance. Raiders, you have shown the way. Whatever anyone may do in the days ahead, this was the first offensive action to be carried out. Our victory, however, has not been without the loss of men who were like brothers to us. But what of the future for those of us who remain? Our course is clear. It is for us at this moment, with the memory of the sacrifice of our brothers still fresh, to dedicate again our hearts, our minds, and our bodies to the great task that lies ahead. We must go further and dedicate ourselves also to the monumental task of assuring that the peace which follows this holy cost will be a just, equitable, and conclusive peace. And beyond that lies the mission of making certain that the social order which we bequeath to our sons and daughters is truly based on freedom, for which these men died. Ah! Marine Corps Base, San Diego, California, 15th of January, 1942. Subject, volunteers for a special battalion. A call has been issued by the commanding general for volunteers for a special battalion to be formed at once. Now this battalion will go into training for a particular combat duty overseas. Those men who can pass the severe requirements of this unit will be assured of immediate active service. The work involves close combat with the enemy, and only those men who are prepared to kill or be killed should apply. 
Those who are accepted will be highly trained and will have every chance of survival. But it must be understood the work is above and beyond the line of duty. Before you can be selected for this raider battalion, I must ask you a few questions. The final decision, of course, will rest with Colonel Thorwald. Yes, sir. Why do you want to kill Japs? That's what we're here for, I reckon. Right you are, but you'll get enough of that just being with the Marine Corps. What I want to know is, how would you feel now with a Jap coming at you with a bayonet? There he is. It's about as far away as that window. I'd feel right silly, Lieutenant Browning, sir. Down home in Kentucky, a feller ain't much of a shot less than he can hit a squirrel through the head. I don't see how anything as big as a jab could get as close as that window. But there'll be times when he can't shoot, when you'll have to sneak up on a man and kill him with a knife. Could you do that? Lieutenant, what a feller tells you here won't be held against him, will it? We'll never go outside that door, Ted Rowe. Lieutenant, I'd done it. A bunch of them Sheffield boys from Breathitt County found out I was sparking one of their gals. One night when I was visiting her, they snuck up around the cabin. The gal seen them just in time. I snuck out, and in the dark, I... That's, that's all right, Ted Rowe. But I, uh, I still don't know just why you want to get into this. Them Sheffields is in the war. Why, if one of them was to kill more Japs than I did, or get decorated, or the like of that, I'd never go home. My pappy'd wallop the daylights out of me, big as I am. What's your reason for joining up with the Raiders? Reason? Yeah, for wanting to join a breakneck gang like this. Why, with your schooling and background, you could make officers training. In no time at all, you'd be past where it's taken me years to get. Now, what's the reason? I'd rather not say, sir. Doesn't my being here speak for itself? It does not. You'll give me a reason and a good one or stop wasting my time. It's nothing I'm ashamed of. Speaking of it may just defeat my purpose, that's all. Out with it. All right. I'm an ordained minister of the gospel. When I left theological college, I entered the Marines instead of seeking a church because I felt that in times like these, so many men in the service, I could do more good here. Now I want the most dangerous post I can find, for there beside me will be the men who will need me most. I'm sorry, Mac. We got our chaplains. What we want now is killers. I'll do my duty, sir. I believe you will, Harbison. This Raider Battalion is a tough outfit, Mac. You don't look salty enough. Yeah, yeah, that's what they all say. Nobody gives me a break. Oh, who are you talking about? Who doesn't give you a break? Nobody gives me a break. At home, it was the same way. To them, I was just, just a no good kid. No good kid, huh? Where are you from, Montana? No, no, Montana's my name, Frankie Montana. I'm from Brooklyn. I wish I was there right now. Oh, this Marine Corps is a bum. Get out of here. Sit down. Cut out the rough stuff. I'll tell you when to go. Don't you ever again make a crack like that about the Marine Corps. Now, what's your belly ache about? Uh, Spit it out! I got no squawk. What'd you do, get pinched or something? Lie about it to get in the Marines? You tell me. You're a real toughie, aren't you? Okay, Frankie. But what I want to know is, why did you volunteer for this job? You didn't have to. Well, I told you. Everybody's always called me a no-good kid. I got sick of it. Oh, I never did anything much. My old man, he, he wasn't my real father, started shoving me around when I was little. I got sore. Wouldn't work. He threw me out in my... My mother died, and I, I trained with a tough crowd. Oh, let it pass, let it pass. Can I go now, sir? Oh, take it easy, son. You know something? They called me a no-good kid once, too. Only they called it to me in Greek. It was a little seaport town, Piraeus. You probably never heard of it. What do you mean? Oh, I ain't so dumb. Oh, I've been there. Washing dishes in a Black Star liner out of Bush Terminal. Well, what do you know about that? Well, that's how I came to America, washing dishes on a boat. Yeah, I took the bumps, kid. I came up the hard way. I never been to Annapolis. But then you can get these without going there, too. Frankie, just because we're a couple of no good kids, I'm going to take a chance at Good 
Thanks, Sergeant Major. Is the old man busy? Never too busy to see you. Go on in, transport. Thanks. Transport. Colonel. Well, well, well. I had an idea you'd show up. Well, when I heard you was back, I just busted right in. I'd have been so if you hadn't. Come on, sit down. Where was it last time, Manila? Oh, Colonel, you forgot. China, the Yancey Patrol. Right, right. Well, you know, transport, I wasn't on the river long. Yeah, I know. And me and the rest of the old gang could hardly believe it when we heard you quit the Marines. Well, I felt bad about that, but I had to do it that way. I can talk about it now. You know where I went? We heard you were sick and went back to the States, but that didn't seem like you. Must have been a couple of Army guys. <laughs> where did you go, Colonel? I joined the Chinese Army. Are you kidding, sir? And not even the Chinese Marines. What for? Well, I can see this war with Japan coming. You didn't have to look far for that. I realized that our first line of defense would be China. So I decided to find out just what her war potential was, just how long she could hold out. I joined the Chinese 8th Route Army. Remember that march they made during the Civil War, 6,000 miles clear across the country? Was they Chinese in the Civil War? I thought there was General Sherman marching along to... Oh, forgive me, sir. I wasn't trying to make no crack, honest. It's just that I don't read the papers past the funny page. Will you excuse me, sir? Never mind, transport. Anyway, that's all over. All the Chinese are united now against the Japs. I've been hearing marvelous things about the... the guerrilla tactics of the 8th Army. This is right after Shanghai. I made up my mind to find out about them. I couldn't go in uniform, so I went without. Plenty of fighting, huh, sir? Transport, you never saw anything like it. Just look at those half-armed, ill-fed peasants. They outmarched, outfought, outmaneuvered the Japs at every turn because they believed in what they were fighting for. Because every man had only one desire, to do his duty. Well, I learned a lot of things that are not in textbooks, and I came back to the States to tell about them. Then, Pearl Harbor, and here we go again. I don't ask for nothing better, sir. Transport, we're going to try out something new. Headquarters giving me a free hand. You'll see some fun before we're through. I hope them Japs have got a sense of humor. They're going to need it. I want you for my personal runner again. So just wait for orders. Yes, sir. As far as I'm concerned, you're okay. The rest is up to the Colonel. And good luck. Thank you, sir. Hey, there. Hey, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Turn the front back again. again. Hey, one side. Look. No, for two what seconds. is this? What is this? Who's next here? I am, sir. I was here first. I was next in line. I went down the scuttlebutt to get a drink of water, and he aced himself. Oh, uh, what are you talking about? Oh. Give me them papers. Hey, there's the same name on both of these. I'm Larry O'Ryan. My name's Kurt Richter. No, no, where it says next of kin, it's the same. It says next of kin, Mrs. Molly Richter, mother. Mrs. Molly Richter, mother. How come? What is this? That's right, Gunner. We both have the same mother. Mom threw my father out when I was a baby and married his old man, a Dutchman. Can you imagine that? Why, his old man hadn't drawn a sober breath in 10 years. Could you blame her? Kind of, kind of. Now, you stand over there. And you stand over there. Now, tell me, you, uh... Richter, why are you so bent on getting in ahead of him, and vice versa? You first. I enlisted to fight Japs. The sooner I get at it, the better. Wouldn't be just a grandstand play, would it? What do you mean? There's a girl. Who is she? Her name's Kathleen. You keep her out of this. Kathleen who? Kathleen Corrigan. It's a girl back in Boston. Her father's in the Marine barracks of the Navy Yard there. Quartermaster Sergeant Corrigan. What? Jim Corrigan's daughter? Why, she's a little baby. I bounced her on my knee. She's in her second year at City College. No. Well, get on with it. Get on. Well, that's all. Except this dope joined the Marines to make a hit with her. Well, that's a lie. Why, hey, no, right uh... down, the both of you. It can't be going on all day like this. We'll toss for it. The loser goes to the end of the line. Why, here's a coin, sir. Thanks. Heads. Heads it is. You wait, and at the end of the line. Hey, wait a minute. Hey, wait a minute. Let me see that coin. Oh, no. All right, let's run that down. Hey, quiet. 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 I see you've been in the brig four times, and always for the same thing, fighting. Well, you've got to be tough to be a Marine, sir. Them monkeys will run all over you if you ain't. You've also been in the ring. What name did you fight under? Pig Iron, sir. I was middleweight champion of East New Jersey once. Why'd they call you Pig Iron? Well, my old man had a little farm just outside of town. 
I used to go around collecting garbage, and the kids started calling me Piggy. Well, I got pretty strong, even those cans around, so after a while, I started to beat the town kids up. Finally, they stopped calling it. Then when I started fighting, they called me Pig Iron, which I didn't mind. I'm beginning to understand your record, Matthews. You felt that people looked down on you on account of your job. When you found you could make them look up to you with your fists, you kept on using them. Now it's got to be second nature with you. You hit first and think afterward. Well, it's kind of hard to think of it that way when the kids hold their noses when you walk by. <laughs> I see there's a lot in that, Matthews. But in the outfit that I'm forming, that's the first lesson to learn. That every man's job is important. Whether he carries a rifle, cooks in the galley, drives a truck, or works as a messman, it's the service that counts. Yes, sir. You'll do, Matthews. Just why did you volunteer for this raider battalion? My brother died at Pearl Harbor. They didn't find enough of them to bury. What caused you to volunteer for this raider battalion? I fought in Spain. I fought in Greece. This fight is all the same. Fascism. Why do you want to join this outfit? My sister was caught by the Japanese in Manila. We never heard a word from her, but we read in the newspapers what they did. Now, what about you? Three years I've been a Marine. I haven't been in a fight yet. This is my chance. Why do you want to sign up? I just don't like Japs. Hey, attention! Sir, the battalion is formed. Take your post. At ease. Sit down, boys, and make yourselves comfortable. The smoking lamp is lit. Boys, this is our first get-together, but it won't be our last. You probably wonder what this is all about. Well, I can't tell you now. You'll learn as you go along. But I can say this. You are to receive a course of training unique in the history of the Marine Corps. <coughs> if you justify the effort to be spent on you, you may be able to point the way in which this, this tremendously difficult war in the Pacific can be won. Briefly, it can be won by teamwork, by trained men fighting together with the precision of a machine. But it's more than that. <coughs> it must be a harmonious machine. Now you start with the fundamentals. And at the bottom of everything is self-discipline. You must start by casting out all prejudices, racial, religious, every other kind. I want you to feel free to ask questions, even embarrassing ones. Come to me with suggestions. We're going to be more than officers and men in this. We're going to be comrades. What I eat, you will eat. Where I sleep, you will sleep. I will take you into my confidence whenever it's possible before going into battle. We'll have a meeting in which I'll explain our plans and objectives so that each of you can make a more intelligent contribution to the result. Afterward, we'll have another meeting to criticize the way in, in which the operation was conducted. We'll fight and endure and win together. Yeah! Ahead of you lies a hard road. You'll often have bad food and very little of that. Many times your bed will be a muddy ditch. You'll march until you think you're exhausted and then be called on to start out again. To carry you through the rough spots before you, teamwork is needed. You'll have to help each other. The Chinese have a word for it. It is gung ho. Gung to work, ho harmony. I propose it as our motto. Gung ho. Come on now, give it to me. <laughs> Pearl Harbor is history now by two months. From 15,000 volunteers, the Colonel has accepted about 900 of us, and our training begins. Calisthenics, the development of a vigorous body to better house a healthy mind and spirit. The Colonel has warned us it isn't going to be easy, and that's the prize understatement of 1942. Our objective is already selected, and we'll attack when our preparation in the tradition of gung-ho is complete. Realizing that we'll shove off the minute we're in shape, we settle down to the sizable job of becoming the second Raider Battalion. And we know the reason for this sweat and bodily pain. The old man explains over and over that these exercises and all the others to follow will pay off on some enemy-held beach or in some Jap-infested jungle. 
We learn to defend and attack without the aid of weapons. You can do a lot with a strong pair of hands, a healthy body, and a quick mind. This is the science of judo. We learn to swim through fire, how to jump from ships. There's the science of scaling walls and barriers, anything the enemy may place in our way or hide behind. This is our security weapon, without which a raider loses his whole identity. One of our boys is a Filipino and an expert with the knife. He teaches us the hundred uses of it, a handy, harmless tool or a deadly, convincing weapon. Now the training becomes more intensive. The officers are right along with us, every ache, every bruise, every step of the way. Their bars and insignia are left in the barracks. We know their rank because we eat, sleep, work, and play together. But they have our respect.